Good morning. Welcome to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship where the blessings never stop flowing. We are so happy to have all of you with us this morning. And at this point, we are going to say choir, sing.
God from whom all blessings flow. I greet you in the name of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the lover of my soul and the center of my joy. Good morning. My name is Minister Angie Payne and I serve as Pastor Anderson's executive assistant. Thank you again, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity to be God's messenger for this fourth year for what we have marked as our unofficial back to school Sunday. As a former classroom teacher, I will always be an educator at heart. This is a challenging season for everyone and everything. But as we say here at the fountain, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I had the joy of vacationing with some of my family members the last week of December in 2019. Trust and believe you are blessed when your children invite you to travel with them and your expenses are minimal. Thank you, God, and thank you, family. One afternoon, as I was sitting outside on a deck as our ship was en route to the next port, I could see the waves rising against the movement of our ship. Occasionally, I could see the fish swimming by. The sky was a clear blue and the ocean seemed to stretch into infinity. Looking out into the distance, the sky and water appeared to meet. Oh yes, Genesis 1 tells us God divided the firmament. It was God who made the heavens and the earth, land and sea. On that lazy afternoon, I was reminded that God is in control of it all. In today's very familiar story, taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the water was not so calm. The disciple Peter, even in this brief moment, wavered. So typical. But let's not be too hard on the brother. Go with me to Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33, the New Living Translation. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it is a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time of proclamation and explanation of your word. Let us be mindful that we all continue to seek you and to go stronger in relationship with you. So unworthy to stand at this sacred jest, but you chose me for this moment. That the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable, acceptable to you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For a few minutes, I would like to share what God has spoken into my spirit from the title, 
trust and believe. We know that prior to this passage of Matthew 14, Jesus had been told by his disciples that his forerunner, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. Jesus also had fed the 5,000. Beginning in verses 22 and 23, Jesus told the disciples to get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. He was going to into the hills to pray. Jesus needed to be alone. He knew the people were ready to declare him king. And although Jesus was and is, that was not the plan. Is it not amazing that even our Lord subjected himself to our father's plan? Some time had passed since Jesus and the disciples had separated, probably about six hours. Verses 24 and 25 tell us the storm was bad. The disciples were fighting heavy waves and they had been blown far from land. It is about three o'clock in the morning. Verse 26 tells us that they saw a figure walking on the water and they were afraid. Bad enough they were in a storm, no land in sight. Now they see someone walking on water, seemingly a ghost. I would have been scared too. As we say in the classroom, here is a pivot of the pericope. Here is a takeaway, if you will. Jesus said in verse 27, don't be afraid, take courage. I'm here. The I am is here. However, our man Peter responded by saying in verse 28, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Our Lord simply said in the next verse, yes, come. So verse 29 continues, and we know Peter must have been feeling pretty confident. He got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But in verse 30, when Peter felt the effects of the wind and the waves and began sinking, he called out, save me, Lord. Verse 31 tells us that Jesus wasted no time in reaching out and grabbing Peter. But Jesus made a statement and he asked a question. You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? Jesus knew that Peter wanted proof of his identity. He only partly believed it, but asked Jesus to save him when he was sinking. Although Peter positioned himself for Jesus's response by his actions, I will give Peter credit. In verse 32, when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Trust and believe. The sovereignty of our Lord stopped the wind and the waves. However, Peter had to climb back into the boat because he did have the courage to get out. In the last verse, 33 of this passage of scripture, the disciples worshiped him. After all of that, they acknowledged his kingship. You really are the son of God, Peter exclaimed. Trust and believe. David Platt, author of Christ-Centered Exposition, Exalting Jesus in Matthew, explained that in Matthew 14, chapters, verses 22 through 33, we can see faith in the face of fear. There are five truths that we can learn and or be reminded of, and we should trust and believe these five truths. Number one, Jesus is sovereign over you. This story reminded us that Jesus controls the winds, waves, night and day. All things are his design. Even as the disciples were struggling in the storm and Peter was walking and then sinking into the water, Jesus was in control of it all. He works for our good in all things. God is aware of what we go through in all seasons, including the difficult ones. But Jesus is sovereign over each of our lives. Trust and believe. Truth number two, Jesus is interceding for you. The scripture told us that while the disciples were battling the waves, Jesus was on his knees on the mountaintop praying for us. As Jesus sits at the right hand of our heavenly father interceding for us, there is never a time that he will not supply us with the strength to endure through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within each of us. 
trust and believe that truth number three, Jesus is always with you. God uses storms in a way to draw us closer to him. Jesus' language in this passage is the same as God's to Moses as he revealed himself in the burning bush in the book of Exodus. How many times are we more cognizant of God's presence when we are in the middle of one of life's storms? God is always with us. We have no reason to ever be afraid. Trust and believe. Truth number four, Jesus is strength in you. Jesus began walking on water toward Jesus because he recognized Jesus and trusted his power and authority. The children's song says we are weak, but he is strong. There is comfort in knowing as we trust in him, we will experience his strength in us. Public service announcement number one, it's not the measure of our faith, but what matters is the object of your faith. Your faith is strong only if the object of your faith is strong. And finally, truth number five, trust and believe that Jesus is peace around you. At the end of the story, when Jesus got back in the boat, the storm ceased. Jesus is the only one who can bring peace in the middle of a storm. Someday we will have peace and we will not have to worry or fear trials or temptations. Until then, we can be encouraged by the sweet peace that only Jesus can give. The climax of chapter 14 is in verse 33 when the disciples for the first time address Jesus as the son of God. The father had addressed Jesus as his son and even the demons knew he was the son of God. This is the relationship between belief and worship. As we come to know Jesus through his word, we should respond with worship and adoration. Brothers and sisters, we are in uncharted territory. On last Sunday, we held our first drive-in worship service. As we began to work out the details, big and small, we realized that we were stepping out on faith and that we would sink if we did not keep our focus on the reason for the service, and that was to bring our ministry partners together for a time of praise and worship. The church has never been closed, but we have been physically apart since the pandemic took hold in mid-March. Many of us have experienced isolation for the first time in our lives. I have heard so many of our ministry partners talk about reading the word more, increasing their time spent in prayer, reconnecting with family and friends, putting their houses in order. These good things have come out of a challenging season. But sadly, my brothers and sisters, we continue to mourn those who have had loved ones to transition from contracting COVID-19. And in this difficult season, we have been painfully reminded of the inequities in education, housing, transportation, and how we access our food. The essential workers should be respected and protected by those who have the privilege of working from home. We are still reeling from one of the most horrendous acts I have ever witnessed, the murder of George Floyd at the hand of a Minneapolis policeman. We should continue to pray for all families who have lost family members through police brutality, the loss of life, or unjust incarceration. But we should also remember the good cops, men and women who put their lives on the line every day for their communities. Disease is not new and neither is systemic racism. But what is new perhaps is a technology driven global society that exposes the good and bad in us and the world within a millisecond of time. Our places of learning are opening or will open in the days and weeks to come.
I know that we will be praying for teachers, faculty, staff, support staff, administrators, school boards, state boards, national governing and accreditation associations, and communities at large as the 2020-2021 school year commences. And as our students begin, whether in person, remotely, or hybrid, from the smallest preschooler to the seasoned university student, let us send up extra timber, as the old folks used to say. Public service announcement number two, students stay focused, strive for excellence, and set your goals high. We need to place our trust in God because we need him now more than ever. Know him, trust him, have faith. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can walk on water and we will get through every storm. Trust and believe. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to accept him today. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner and I ask you for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. You have now accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you are looking for a church home on behalf of our pastor and the ministry partners of the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, we would love to have you unite with us. We welcome you with open arms. Feel free to contact us through our website, Facebook page, or the old fashioned school way. You can just call the church. Let us pray. At this time of worship, together draws to close. We thank you for the word you had for us today. We will trust and believe on the one who walked on water, the one who came to save us because you loved us that much. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, be glory and honor, dominion and power both now and forever. Be blessed, stay safe and stay well. Amen, amen and amen.
thank you so very much for your prayerful support and all the things that we have done in ministry to help so many others. We encourage you to please remember to sow a seed. We sow seeds in more ways than one. We can tangibly sow a seed into this ministry by going to thefountainofraleigh.org and click at the donate button. It is from there you can safely and securely give through PayPal or else you may use the Tithely app. We thank you so very much for your generous support in times past and we thank you for your present support and what you will do in the future. May God richly bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask, say, or think according to his power at work in you. God bless you. Okay.